Okay, we're going to continue on with this video series on the AC system and we're still going to continue to talk about the cycling clutch orifice tube system. Next component we're going to get into is the AC condenser right here. So I happen to have a condenser right here off of a Honda little Civic. So it's a very small unit, easy to handle and, and easier for me to explain as well. So let's get right into it. We got the two lines coming in. We got one here and one here. So this line here is going to be the uh, uh, discharge line from the compressor feeding the condenser. So we're going to feed this condenser right here through this, this uh, fitting location. And the exit for the condenser is over here, right out of the bottom of this condenser. So that's going to be our liquid line which leaves the condenser here. So let's explain what's going on inside of here. It looks like a radiator, but it's a little more, a little more than just that. So if we if we take a peek at this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in here in a second so you can see what I'm talking about here. But there's multiple paths for refrigerant to flow through this. So if this is the AC compressor discharge line feeding the condenser, um, it has a large tube here for the refrigerant to drop into. <clears throat> and then multiple paths to get across. But what you can't see is right here. There's a little weld spot right there. I don't know if you can see it. And what has happened in that area is there's a blockage. They blocked this part of the tube off. Nothing can get below it if it comes in here. So all the refrigerant coming in stops there and can go across in these few tubes to get to the other side. Once it gets to the other side, we have another path here. It drops all the way down to the next pinch weld right there. You can see that. So this refrigerant comes in and now comes back across to the other side. Once again, into the tube. Can't go up because it's blocked. So it's going to drop down into the bottom section and then move right back across and then exit the condenser out the liquid line. So we, if we were to relate this to electrical system, this is a series parallel circuit. We're coming in as a series or one path for refrigerant to flow. Drops into this tube and then we go into a parallel circuit. We have multiple paths to get across to the other side. We join back up again into a series circuit, drop down, go parallel again, across, go back to series, down, and then parallel and series out. So that's the movement of the refrigerant. So what we want to have happen here is we want that refrigerant to actually transfer heat. And the heat transfer is happening through the airflow going through this. So all of these tubes are directly connected to this fin system here. And you can see all those little fins just like a radiator within there. They're in direct contact of the tubes. So this is uh, heat transfer through conduction. And so if refrigerant is going through there at a various temperature and we're hoping that it's a higher temperature than the ambient air outside. It has to be for heat to transfer. So if the outside air is at 75 degrees and the refrigerant inside is at 90 degrees, well now the airflow across will make contact with these fins. The refrigerant will transfer its heat to the fins and the ambient air will carry it away and actually cool the refrigerant passing through as it goes through these three different parallel paths. So the goal is by the time it reaches the bottom that all of the, the vapor form of high pressure refrigerant has changed states to a liquid by the time it gets to the bottom. That's why this is referred to as a condenser because we are going to take a gas and condense it back to a liquid. So we're going to transfer the heat, cool it down, and condense it so that we leave this condenser as a high pressure liquid only. Okay. All right, I think that's it on this component. Uh, actually, there's one more thing I want to mention the fact. Uh, this is not one of them, but some of the newer condensers that you find on cars today, if you look at the bottom where these tubes end, you may see a a large Allen cap, I mean Allen head type wrench would fit it. And if you unscrew that cap and, re and open it up, what you're going to find inside is 
something that looks like this. Um, now this one's still in the plastic wrapper. Uh, this is a desiccant bag right here that would slide right up into the tube of the condenser and that's where they're going to store this which is kind of nice because uh, you can replace these. This is, this is the systems that actually allow you to remove a desiccant bag and, and replace it if you need to without replacing an entire component like this where it's encapsulated inside and you can't get it out. Okay. All right, there you go.